Any questions that you're going to test next week? Any questions concerning the test? Two through five. That's the chapter design? Yes. How, how, what's the best way to get a good grasp of what the test is going to be like? I have posted a mess of old tests on Blackboard. How much different are they from the How much different are they going to be from the chapter design? All right. When I, when I create a test, I go through, I have all the test ones in a folder. Actually, the folders within folders, but I take my cursor and I sort of look away or close my eyes and I run the cursor up and down and I click somewhere. After about five tries, I eventually click on a folder on a particular test. I open that up and that's my starting point. I take that test and highlight the whole thing in yellow. And then I start going through question by question. Uh, hey, I like that question. I'm going to ask something similar to that. Wow, that was a really horrible question. I can't believe I asked that. And so I say, good, yeah, I'm not going to ask that. Uh, there's some of them going to go, yeah, I like the concept. That skill is really poor on the way I worded that question. So I'm going to ask something in that general area. And that's basically how I go about making it. And occasionally there's the, man, I've asked the same question in five tests in a row. So let me change it a little bit. Instead of giving you this information, I'll give you this information. You have to answer keys for the previous tests? Uh, some of them have answer keys, some of them have solutions, and you just have to see. I, I think there's one place where I just dumped things where I didn't have answers or solutions posted. But they're all labeled as test one. Is it multiple choice? No. Um, <laughs> I have had multiple choice. I don't remember if there's any multiple choice on this one. I'm thinking not. The reason I went, ugh, uh, that's from a student point of view. What, from me as a student, I hated multiple choice as a student because there was no partial credit. I've survived classes on partial credit. So the, the idea that it's all or nothing just never really sits well with me. Also, my first year here, I had multiple choice questions on test. I had a student who, excellent free response, got really one of the highest marks on the free response, but multiple choice he could not do. And there's a certain lack of fairness to that. The, he was far more talented than what the tests were showing. Which also gets into, I started, I thought about that and I thought, all right, what's, what's actually a fair way of grading this? And so I ended up with multiple ways of calculating what the final grade is. And whichever one benefits you the most is the one you get. Are we going to go over any of that today, or do we just keep on moving? I was going to keep on moving. Unless you have a question, I'd be glad to answer it. But No, I just don't want to look at it and get stuck on something and not be able to figure it out. You can go, if you get, send me an email. Okay. Uh, I tend not to check emails over the weekend, but if you, I, I had some students who say, listen, I, I'm not gonna be able to look at this stuff until Saturday at six o'clock, and so I'll be sending you a question by such and such a time on Saturday. And I say, when would you, and I say, okay, I'll give you a response by such and such a time on Sunday. So I have had special deals like that, but uh, if you have questions, please email me. Even if it's the, the vagaries of, I have no idea how to even approach this, I'm not even sure what my question is, but I'm just lost on this question. And then I can do sort of a, here, let me take a shot at it. There are limits to, I'm typing in text. I tried to see if I could actually write with a, a, a pen and a Wacom tablet, if I could actually write in an email. That would have been really convenient, but I couldn't figure out how to do that. It's a lot for you, probably, but there's a thing where if you write on paper and you take a picture of it, uh, there's an app called Doc Scanner, and you can just upload it to the email. And, and also, it's a lot for I, you, but I mean, it's, it's pretty convenient for most of everything. And, and I have taken pictures before, and I haven't done the Doc Scan, but I've taken pictures before and included that. Yeah. Uh, the resolution on the camera is really good, and so it's a really oh. huge picture for this much space, so you have to shrink it down. But I have done that before. And if I get five questions that are all similar, I then realize, oh, I may as well just 
if I could type it all out and then I just cut and paste, I, I do that. Or I have done videos also. Of, I know people have had this question. They'll just, they'll just post this. Uh, how many questions will there be? I, I don't remember. Just look at the old test. That give you a sense. Will there be a quiz? It depends on how you want to look at that. <laughs> is my gradient scale different from the 10 point gradient scale that Forsyth Tech has officially listed? Yes. Well, you give one though, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what we use. Uh, philosophically, an 89 versus a 90. I, I've had heard some people say they got an 89.5, that's not a 90, so that person gets a B, and the person that gets a 90 gets an A, and I'm thinking, what really is the difference in the quality of work? So philosophically, I try not to have people who are, are off by one point get two completely different grades. It has happened before. Sometimes you get that streak of, of, of scores where the person, maybe you have to grades 50, 51, 52, 53, all the way up through 65. The person who had the 50 and the person who had 65, clearly different levels of work. But where do I draw the line and just cut it off and say, all right, this person got the C plus this person gets to the B minus. I, I hate when that happens, but it does happen. Do you have the quizzes from last week? I do. I will hand them back before the end. Okay. I, oh, I meant to set my alarm so that it reminds me to do that. Can you go over one more time uh, what SI measure and what? Okay. We're done at 550. Could you answer five. questions on uh, the quiz three? Pardon? Could you answer questions on the quiz three if you have any? Like, yes. I think everyone in here is taking quiz three. Is there anyone who is not? Okay. Um, yeah, so there were two questions out there. One questions on quiz three and a refresher. Oh, um, units. Yeah. You said the test is on two Yes. So the quantities we've dealt with, let's see, chapter three, there was force. And the initial chapter, I'm oh, sorry, chapter two. Force. The SI unit is a Newton. Then we get uh, time is the second. And uppercase, lowercase does matter. And Newton is a capital N. Now there's some people who do their capital N's just like bigger versions of their small N's. Uh, if you're doing that, please make sure that it's literally big N. Uh, position. Displacement. Distance. Now, in terms of units, the vectors like force, position, displacement, these are all vector quantities. There's a magnitude and a direction. The units I'm giving are the units of the magnitude. And then for distance, it's a scale where there's no direction involved at all. But technically, for the vectors, you could have an angle there with units of degrees, but um, we're just doing the units. And then put parentheses here for vectors, units of magnitude, or size, or whatever word you want to use there. Speed and velocity. I 
I'm trying to remember. I usually do. Don't get on jerk, but. Oh, jerk. I thought you were being funny. No, but not jerk. All right, here's jerk. We we have no 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 math problems whatsoever. There was one question, one part of one question on a previous test where I wanted them to identify the units. That's that was the only thing jerk I've ever done. Asymmeters per second cube. Cube. No, yep. Three, three, I think I heard cube. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a cube there. Yeah, that's so much better. Um, so velocity is change in position over change in time. Acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. Jerk is the change in acceleration over the change in time. So you think about that. You're sitting at a traffic light. The light is red. You're sitting there. A car is idling. And then suddenly the light changes to green. You slam your foot down on the gas pedal because that's just the way you are right now, at least with the problem. So think about this. This is, you're going in that direction. This is your head. And when you slam on the gas pedal, there's a quick change in acceleration because you go from zero to something. And so your head jerks back. Jerk. Now, change in jerk over the change in time. Unit vector. It's a regular vector. So in that scenario, you're sitting at the stoplight, the light's red, you slam your foot onto the gas pedal to go, your head jerks backwards, but then you realize the car in front of you is not moving yet. So you slam on the brakes, and so your head basically does this maneuver. Oh, I thought you were. Uh, they have not decided to use whiplash in this particular case. They've gone for snap. So this is snap. There's a change in snap over the change in time. But most of you know they know what this is already. Come on, what comes after snap? Crackle. And then this is crackle. Are you And then change in crackle over the change in time is pop. All right, so. Is that an actual thing? Yeah, it is. Oh, All right, so <laughs> let's, let's talk about the legitimacy of this. I have seen jerk in textbooks. So it's gotten that far. There's actually, it depends upon which part of the world you're in, uh, there are other names for this besides jerk, but jerk is pretty much a US standard for this term. But I have seen it in textbooks. Snap, crackle, and pop actually have shown up in referee journals. A uh, referee journal is. <laughs> When you're publishing uh, at especially four-year universities uh, in order to maintain your status as a professor or to move up in status, you have to publish. You have to get your name out there. And so you send in, there's certain journals that where you send articles in and the publisher will then send it out to other people who are in that field to review. They come back and give feedback, which then gets sent back to the author. And then there's a round of iteration still, everyone's happy, and then it gets published. So that's a referee journal. One of the ways, in order to get something internationally recognized, it has to be in, you know, one of the starting points is a referee journal. Snap, Crackle, and Pop have been in two referee journal articles. Now, it has not been accepted by the international community yet. It is pretty much a US thing. What do they use cool. instead? So, When you're doing the change in position over change in time, there's a shorthand notation that's used with you just put a dot over it. So therefore, acceleration would be V with a dot over it, which is just X with two dots over it. This would be X with three dots over it. Now at some point, it becomes a real nuisance to keep putting dots because you have a limit you know, what your computer can handle. So, and the notation is a little bit of calculus notation. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of the meaning other than uh, another way of expressing this would be dx in, oh, actually, that's four, four, four. So sometimes you'll see it written like this, sometimes written like that. 
Was Ray right under um, Chance and Crackle? What did I write under Crackle? Yeah. Off. Off. No, um, to the left. Oh. Uh, I didn't feel like writing the word crackle out, so I just drew an arrow from the word crackle to here. So the change in crackle over the change in time. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is there a change in pop over time? <laughs> I had a student who uh, wanted the word splat to be used, but that has not made it past any of my students. <laughs> uh, but the units, if you think about the units, though, as we work our way down, this is meters per second, meters per second squared, meters per second cubed meters per second to the fourth, meters per second to the fifth. Meters per second to the sixth. Yep. Do we even need to know that for this test? Uh, and the snap crackle thought thing is mainly just for the, the joy of physics trivia. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you use jerk? I'm still lost on that one. <laughs> when you would use jerk? Yes. So maybe you could do a problem. We we have dealt primarily with acceleration being constant. When you get past that, when you start dealing with other things with acceleration not being constant, it can be done with approximations without using calculus, but jerk is something that would primarily show up. It, the actual in a problem would show up uh, in more of a calculus-based problem, of course. I mean, everyday life, jerk is not zero. Stop and go traffic, you're constantly speeding up, slowing down, your acceleration is changing a great deal. Hunter, you mentioned, you asked before where they answer questions from quiz three. Mm -hmm. Did you want me to, did you have one in mind or did you want it handed back? I, I vaguely remember the one being on the quiz that I wanted to ask a question about, but I, I can just ask that after class. It's not really yeah, or um, if I think about it, right now the alarm is set to go off 10 minutes before the end of class. I'm going to hand it back and make some comments. Uh, if I think about it, I'll give a little bit more time. It may, there may not be anything, but I don't know. I just vaguely remember there being something I wanted to ask about. Okay. Yeah, I think it would be helpful if we could get our quizzes back and see what we got wrong to see what we would have questions about. All right. I'll do that now. I'm going to kill the camera, though. Or metaphorically. <laughs> 